What's up everyone, Thralls Metal here once again. I'm the Croc Nick and I have a collection update for you. And this one's big. This one is possibly the biggest one I've done yet. Pretty much I hit up the record store down the street from me and apparently they had gotten a whole bunch of just crazy underground stuff. Lots of like more obscure releases from smaller labels. Blood Harvest, Invictus, Hell's Headbangers, and a litany of other things. And I, I kind of went nuts. So most of this is pretty much underground and obscure stuff. There's a couple more well-known ones. Only a few of these are actually 2020 releases too. So a lot of this is more stuff from, you know, a few years ago. And a lot of this is in the realm of like black and death metal, black and thrash, black and speed metal, and of course a fair amount of death metal too. But most of this is pretty damn underground and I can't wait to get into it. So I'm going to. First we have the split between adversarial and paroxysm. This is War Pit of Coiling Atrocities. And this is some really nasty black and death metal, both bands. Adversarial, their side is definitely more raw. Like the production is more like a demo quality. It kind of has that almost brutal death snare, like that really plunky one that you know, most of you probably know I'm not a big fan of. But it's really interesting. They really kind of labor the atmosphere. There's machinery sounds, there's like howls, and I think animals snarling. I don't know, but overall, it's pretty nasty, like oppressive listen. And they do a pretty decent cover of Vengeance is Mine by Morbid Angels, so I can't really knock them there. Now, the paroxysm side of this is way more dense. It's still very raw sounding, but I think it sounds more full. I think the bass is a little bit more up in the mix and it kind of just blends together to be this noisy, dissonant, just ugly sound. I really enjoyed that side of the split. It's just more up my alley. I like the overall dense sound. I like the fact that it has like a incantation or immolation quality, albeit with like black metal atmosphere. But this was pretty solid, and I got a little bit more of one of these bands in here coming up, so yeah, I definitely dug this. Obviously enough to pick up on the band's solo album, so yeah, definitely check this out. Blood Soaked Necrovoid. Let's see, this is called The Apocryphal Paths of the Ancient Eighth Vitrolic Transcendence. Jesus. And I'm not even going to go into the song titles because they're absurdly long too, but this is pretty much a collection reissued by Blood Harvest Records and through Caligari Records of their first two demos, or first three, I believe it's their first two. And this is straight up ugly, very atmospheric death doom from Costa Rica. We actually covered their most recent album that came out on uh, Iron Bonehead and did a full on review of it and it was really good. So, of course, when I saw this, I had to pick it up. And granted, this is a lot more raw, and I think parts of it kind of are a little bit closer to, like, just a little bit more just old-school death metal because there's a few more, like, up-tempo moments on here than there are compared to the newest one, which uh, that one probably has a long title to it. I'm not even going to try to remember it. But this is definitely 100% death doom. It's slow. It's sludgy. It's less atmospheric, I guess, than their newest release. And you can definitely tell the difference between the two demos when one shifts and the other because one is definitely more raw. And surprisingly, it's the second one. The second demo is the more muddy of the two, which generally you'd think the first demo would be. But I dug it. I love the songwriting. I love the overall feel. I like the new one more just because it's a more polished product, but granted, it is still very, very raw. But definitely check this out because this is a really cool start for these guys. And, I mean, if you love Death Doom and just cosmic howls and you know cold void of space lovecraftian all those things it's here definitely check it out death cult beasts of faith this is this band's debut on invictus records came out in 2016 and this is flat out old school death metal very much in the vein of autopsy death early immolation stuff like that in fact there's even a cover of evil dead on here and they do a spot-on job I love the overall sound of this. It sounds like it was recorded in the late 80s, early 90s. It has that very, you know, raw old school sound. The vocals on here are absolutely nuts. They go from growls to shrieks to like pretty much just yells, except they're like anguished yells, like you're screaming from the bottom of a well that they've been trapped in for, you know, a few hours now. Really solid listen. I love the song running here. It's still very riff oriented it's very catchy there's lots and lots of killer riffs on here and the last track on here is an 
absolutely banging instrumental and accursed procession. It's, I believe, like eight and a half minutes and it absolutely kills from start to finish. This is a killer debut. I definitely will be looking out for more stuff by this guys. I think this is the only release they have outside of a demo. And I just eagerly anticipate another full length because this is really solid stuff. Definitely check this out. All right, we have a couple from Death Spawned Destroyer. This is their debut, the first bestial butchery. It's tough to say. And this is their second one, War Blood Massacre, all one word. And this is Finnish Death Doom. Now these are the only two albums these guys have. Um, this being their debut definitely is a lot more raw, uh, very just demo quality. Like it really doesn't sound like it was really mastered at all. And this one isn't as Death Doom as this one. This one is maybe a little bit more just straight up Finnish death metal. There are still a lot of Death Doom elements in Finnish death metal, but this one has more up-tempo stuff, a um, little bit, you know, more aggressive, I guess, less atmospheric. Very raw, and I, I gotta say, like, the vocals on here, I just couldn't get into. Not that they're, like, really bad, they just feel just kind of there. Like, it's just sort of this kind of uniform growl that's all over. And, of course, like, the really muddy production doesn't help, like, you know, it just doesn't really stand out very much. This one, slightly better production. Growls are kind of the same, but this one, I think the songs are more dynamic, and this is where they really started to sound more like a Death Doom band. Songs slowed down, a little bit more atmospheric, you know, more of those Doom-laden riffs. And lead work on here is kind of spotty, though I think this one has the better lead work of the two. It's just maybe a little bit more fitting. This is just, you know, kind of like squealy dive bombs and such. It's there to just sort of accent the moment, but this is where it kind of came together. Now. These guys broke up, I believe, not long after these releases. I think these came out in 2003 and 2005, just checked. But they did reform, I believe, this year. Now, these are the actual originals, I believe. So these aren't reissued just recently. So I assume they're probably back together so they can work on new material. So I'd like to hear pretty much how much they've improved because there's definitely some improvement on this one versus this one. But either way, definitely check it out. It's very raw, nasty, death doom, and if you're into that, well, yeah, here you go. Diafago, I the Devil. This came out in 2019 on Hell's Headbangers, and this is a Filipino blackened death metal band, though after listening to this, I would say it might be closer to war metal. This is absolutely insane sounding. I figured it was gonna be a little bit more straightforward, but I was really wrong. Like this is almost not musical in spots. Like it is so distant and so chaotic and just so all over the place that a lot of this just didn't make sense. And I listened to this a couple times. Like I backtracked just to see if I could spot like some hooks or riffs. And there are some, but they're really pockmarked. And I think the intention of this was just to be as chaotic as possible. Now, this is my first exposure to this band, so I don't know what all their past works sound like, and I know they've been around for a while. I believe this is their fifth release, so I don't know what they sounded, you know, like from one through four. I would assume, you know, there's some consistency in their sound, but I don't know. But yeah, I just, I can't get into it. Like, it just feels insane for the sake of being insane and maybe just completely dismissive of having like a hook here or there. I don't quite get the approach there, but you know, I mean, if you get into absolutely insane black and death metal, I guess, again, I think it's closer to war metal, just in terms of the approach. I just could not get into this, but I still recommend checking it out. Of course, there's gonna be links to all this music down below. And yeah, maybe you will find something that I didn't in it, but yeah, I really didn't care for this one that much. But still, definitely check it out, form your own opinions. Diabolic Force, Praise of Satan. This is a Brazilian black and thrash band. This is their second release out on Hell's Headbangers. And this is pretty much exactly what I said, Brazilian black and thrash. Very muddy. Uh, it's definitely a knock on the production here. It's very akin to like early Sepultura, early Sarcophago, that sort of sound in terms of just kind of how raw and muddy it is. And I think that was kind of done with some intention because I'm pretty sure that's the sound they were going for. And I would say for the most part, they nailed it. It definitely has that sort of appeal. 
maybe a little oversimplified in spots, but again, that is kind of the sound of those, you know, early albums by Sarcophago and Sepultura. But, you know, in that simplicity, there's still a lot of fun. It's kind of like that Dark Throne sort of minimalist approach. Like, let's just give them some simple riffs, but make sure they're absolute bangers. And for the most part, they did that. Good balance, of course, of thrash and black metal, but with a lot of sort of punkish spots on here too. I definitely enjoyed this though. I wish it, again it had like slightly better production just because I think some of the stuff is kind of lost in all the mud. But overall, it was a fun listen. So yeah, definitely check it out. It's a pretty good time and if you like Black and Thrash, yeah, definitely check it out. Disembowel, Act of Invocation. This is their EP that came out in 2014 and this is not to be confused with the Disembowel band that's on Maggot Stomp Records. They're a totally different band and play a totally different style. Well, kind of. This is Black and Death Metal from Chile, and this is really solid. Now, this was, again, reissued by Iron Bonehead. This originally came out in 2014. This reissue came out in 2017, though, and it's really good. It actually sort of favors death metal a little bit more. The guitar tone on here is so raw and chunky. There's really solid lead work. Great deep growls, but they're very intelligible. Solid EP. I'm, I'm definitely going to be jamming this one a lot. I really dig this, and hopefully I'll find some more releases of theirs. I don't know if they have much else. This is a relatively new band, and I'm kind of curious if any of their other releases have a little bit more black metal to them, because there's just sort of touches of black metal in here. This is mostly death metal, but it's thoroughly enjoyable death metal. So yeah, definitely check this out, and check out the other Disembowel band, too. They're pretty damn good, too, but definitely check this one out. Eggs of Gamor, Rot Prophet. Now uh, this is a Swiss black and death metal band. I guess some people call them a war metal band. And it's such a hard thing to distinguish. But I mean, generally if it's really noisy black and death metal or black and grind or whatever, that war metal tag kind of gets hurled at it, but sometimes it doesn't necessarily stick. Regardless of what you want to call this, this is extremely heavy. This is wall-to-wall -wall dissonance. The drum work is absolutely insane on here. It is kind of similar to Brutal Death Metal. It kind of has that plunky snare and I don't know, it kind of works though. Like all of this is just about brutality and just in your face noise, but there's actual hooks in here. There's actual melodies. There's even some clean chanted vocals on here and this band is just nuts sounding. I mean, what do you expect from a band with a drummer that has a name Goat Perv? That's pretty damn metal. Pretty much everything in here is just drenched in reverb. It sounds like it was recorded in a subway tunnel, but surprisingly, I didn't get put off by this. Actually, I liked a good chunk of this, and I think it's the fact that there are some actual melodies and hooks buried in here. I would definitely check out more by this band for sure. So yeah, definitely check these guys out. Funeral Chant, self-titled. This is the debut album from these guys. They are an Oakland-based black and death metal band, and this is very much like old school death metal mixed with black metal. And I really wish they had better production because the production here is pretty rough. It's more like a demo quality and the levels are kind of odd. Like I think the bass sounds like it's kind of up in the mix, which generally I don't have a problem with, but the vocals seem like they're kind of low in the mix. But then again, in other songs, they sound like they're kind of up in the mix. So it's a little uneven. Musically though, I really dig this. There's lots of cool riffs in here. It is drenched in atmosphere, actually, like right from the start. It has like some really cool like droning bits and it really builds tension well. I do like that. Mostly it's the good balance of dissonance and atmosphere and riffs that pretty much makes you want to actually get more by this band. Now this came out on Duplicate Records. I really don't know much about that label, but I will definitely be looking for more from this band in the future because this is a pretty solid debut. So definitely check it out. Gut Void, Astral Beastry. Now this is the debut EP from this Toronto-based death metal slash death doom band. And I think we should pretty much call them a death doom band because the bulk of this is more death doom. And by bulk, I mean, this is only three tracks, but I believe the second track is over 11 minutes and the last track I believe is around eight. The opening track I thought was decent. It kind of comes off as like, you know, very groovy, straight up old school death metal. Has a pretty cool bass line, but uh, it really didn't do much for me. Then that second track comes in, Entranced by a Frozen Dawn, and oh my god, that is an absolutely epic, long Death Doom song. This is 
where the band's strength is. It's a well thought out song. It builds tension really well. There's a lot of cool dynamics, great melodies. It's haunting, it's creepy, it's heavier than hell. Excellent stuff. And then Pilgrimage to the Necropolis Ruins, the last track is instrumental and it's kind of post-metal-ish. So honestly, listening to this, it definitely sounds like they kind of experiment with some ideas in terms of like three very different songs, but the last two songs are definitely where it's at. First songs, decent, but the last two songs, I think that is what the band should be heading toward because they are really, really good at it. So yeah, it's only a three song EP, not really much to say. Blood Harvest Records, you signed a really good one. Definitely looking for more from these guys. So yeah, definitely check it out. Ludicra, another great love song. This is their second album that came out in 2004 on Alternative Tentacles. And I actually covered this band in an underrated uh, black metal video a while ago. Actually, it was the release that followed this, or maybe there was another release in between. Either way, I knew about this band, so I picked this one up because I didn't have it. And in case you hadn't watched the underrated black metal album, one I did, this is a supergroup. Features members of Agaloc, Exhumed, Hammers of Misfortune, a lot of different underground acts, but those are kind of the main ones there. And this is really interesting black metal. It's interesting with the amount of different styles they include in black metal. You have very chuggy, thrashy parts, some very punkish parts, lots of atmosphere, but there's lots of acoustic sections as well. Clean female vocals as well as harsh female vocals. It's very chuggy for black metal too. Like it's not all about those like, you know, dissonant strumming and all the atmosphere. Granted, there's plenty of that, but there's a lot of like very chuggy, thrashy, almost kind of death metal sections. Kind of reminds me a bit of Dissection, you know, just in parts. But really interesting release. I don't know if it's as good as the last one that they put out, which this band is defunct now. They split up, you know, quite a while ago. But I do like this and I definitely want to get more by Ludicro because this is an interesting band. So yeah, definitely check this one out. Mongrel's Cross, Psalter of the Royal Dragon's Court. This is their second album, came out in 2018 on Hell's Headbangers Records. This is an Australian blackened thrash band. And Jesus Christ, these guys have killer riffs. Now they've recently gone through a lineup change. In fact, their current frontman is Prescriptor from Absu. He is on their last album, which I did not pick up. It came out this year. I'm gonna have to because if it's anything like this, it's gonna be awesome because this is just very riff driven, very epic. Like there are so many damn hooks on this album. Every song just seems like it has a giant epic but still evil sounding hook. It doesn't seem to matter whether the moment favors black metal or thrash metal or sort of the blend of the two. There's almost always killer melodies. There's even some like trad metal like harmonies like blackened Iron Maiden. It doesn't seem to matter. Whatever track you pick there are killer melodies on it and I absolutely love this. I have their first one and I thought it was really good. I think this one is definitely an improvement. I definitely want to listen to the first one again and give it a fair shake in comparison to this, but yeah, dude, this is absolutely killer. And definitely gonna have to pick up that new one. So yeah, I gotta complete that discography because yeah, this is absolutely incredible and you should definitely check this one out because again, riffs, hooks, harmonies, melodies, black metal, it's all here. It's absolutely awesome. Definitely check this out. Morgatory 666, The Rotting Flesh. Now this is actually from my hometown. This is from Toledo. And on a Toledo label, Morbid and Miserable Records. And I actually know the guy playing drums in this. Actually, I've done like a review of one of his other bands in another collection update. And this is his death metal project. Now this was released this year, though the band has, I guess, broken up. I don't know if they're gonna reunite now they have an album out. But this is just flat out old school death metal very dark and gloomy and lots of like incantation worship but it's interesting because the vocals at least on most of this seem to favor almost like kind of a hardcore delivery like they're kind of like you know kirk from crowbar when he's sort of belting out the more hardcore parts and like just real throaty and ugly but it's 100 percent death metal like without a doubt that guitar tone really could be nothing else it is so goddamn heavy and chunky and this was actually recorded in three different sessions and you can tell because the recording quality or rather mix sort of changes between you know different tracks on here like you can definitely tell like this batch was done then this batch was done then this batch was done then 
And it's kind of cool because you actually hear sort of a transition there in those where one production they're kind of going for more of like a death doomy part, or the other one is like a little bit more like a thrashy up tempo sort of death metal. Either way, this is just packed with riffs, grooves, and absolute beat down riffs. So if you like any of those things in your death metal, which if you like death metal, you probably should, definitely check this out. All right, we have a four-way split here between Oxalate, Perpetuated, Bloodspore, and Vivisect. This is out on Blood Harvest Records, and, well, you have four very similar death metal bands in terms of their style, because they definitely like old-school death metal, and it's very sludgy and dense and nasty, and that pretty much covers all of these bands. Subtle differences, Bloodspore has maybe some slightly more black-end vocals, Perpetuated, loves the D-beat, there's a little bit of like hardcore to them. And Vivisect actually own their EP, so I kind of knew what they sounded like initially. In fact, that was my reason for getting this, was when I saw their name on it, I was like, well, I know what they sound like, so I assume the other bands probably sound a bit similar. And theirs is a very like two mold style of death metal, awesome stuff. And then Oxalate is just dense, heavy, sludgy death metal as well. All four songs are solid on here. I, I definitely dig this. It's a short listen, again, one song a piece. But if you're looking for like a good sampler size from a bunch of underground death metal bands, I would say definitely check this out because all four of them have a really killer song on here. And it's just flat out good stuff. It's a fun listen. So definitely check it out. Paroxysm, self-titled. Told you to get back to this band. This is their debut album, came out in 2012 on Dark Descent. And this is murky, disturbing, black and death metal. It is just absolutely nasty sounding and it's sort of like peppered with creepy samples and like sort of like dissonant droning in the background just to make it sound even creepier. Very much in the realm of again like a black metal oriented immolation or incantation. It's all about that murk and gloomy and desolate atmosphere. Kind of gets lost in the production though, especially the drums. Man, the drums need to come up in this, and I think they're kind of mixed a little poorly. When this band goes into blast beats, it kind of gets lost. Like, you really kind of can't hear what the hell the drums are doing. Like, maybe my speakers are terrible, but I think they're pretty good. But I could not hear the snare drum at all, and then, I don't know, the bass drum has kind of a flat sound. And it might just be the guitars are too high up in the mix, but I like the sound of the guitars because they are so damn heavy on this. So maybe it's just bring up the drums. But I love pretty much everything about this album in terms of their overall sound. Like, it is just a nasty, ugly, disturbing listen, and I really like that. Great atmosphere, great riffs, there's even some cool breakdowns here and there, which, you know, generally when a band starts to favor more atmosphere, you don't hear a lot of breakdowns anymore. They threw in a couple of really nasty ones on here. Solid debut, I definitely plan on checking out more by them. I think they have uh, maybe a couple of EPs already have the one split so yeah i'm definitely looking for more because this was a pretty solid listen so definitely check it out soul rot victims of spiritual warfare and this came out this year on memento mori and this is a chilean death metal band and these guys love swedish death metal this is hm2 worship all over the place old school entombed bloodbath dismember all those bands Pretty much they capture that sound 100%. It's a very raw, like sort of dirty sound. And overall, I like the music. The vocals are kind of an issue in here, and it's mostly just the way they're recorded. They sound like he's just kind of yelling into a bucket with really no effects. Like it, it just sounds like the vocals were an afterthought and they kind of rushed to production. I was like, well, we just gotta get vocals on this. Yell into this bucket, okay. That's how they kind of sound. Now song-wise, I think it's really solid for the most part. There are 15 tracks in here and it pretty much can go from like a longer, more mid-tempo song to just almost a short, almost kind of like grindcore length song. Some songs sound like they were kind of maybe incomplete or kind of hastily put together, but overall most of this is really good. Most of my issues here are just with the production, it's mostly just the vocals. This is straight up HM2 death metal, and if you love that sort of thing, you should definitely check it out because this is pretty solid. Throat, that's with two A's, or throw at. 
whatever. This is Black Speed, their EP from 2015, and this is Black and Thrash slash Speed Metal from Brooklyn, New York. And pretty much if you love bands like Midnight and Toxic Holocaust, you're gonna love this. This is riffy as hell, lots of cool hooks, lots of cool harmonies. I mean, just giant, catchy riffs. But of course, black metal vocals, loads of reverb, pretty much just screams like early Dark Throne, early Bathory, you know, but with like really cool heavy metal riffs. I like the contrast and I'm a huge Midnight fan, so this pretty much sat with me right away like, oh yeah, no, I, I'm going to like this, and I did. And it was pretty much right from the rip. The song Explode from Living Flame, that song alone is just hook after hook. I absolutely loved it. The real kicker though is I really like their cover of In League with Satan and well this band definitely sounds like they've listened to Venom quite a few times. Solid EP. I definitely need to look out for more of this. This came out on Invictus Records which apparently is a label I need to hit up because there's been a couple in this stack that have been really good on that label. This included. Definitely check this out. Toxamia, Buried to Rise. Now this is actually a collection of demos from 1990 and 1991 or 1990 through 1991. It's a Swedish death metal band. They pretty much got all their early work together for this compilation. Now it's two discs, but both discs are all the same songs. But the first disc is pretty much Dan Swano's remix of all those songs. And yeah, no, his, his disc wins because Dan Swano does a lot of good work. This is still really raw too, even with the Dan Swano touch on it. And it's not very like, you know, buzzsaw, like Dismember and Entombed. It's more kind of like sludgy and kind of dirty sounding. Most of it I think it's like a little bit closer to finished death metal, though there are those sort of thrashier touches to it. Lots of just cool guitar work leads, just nasty overall sound together. And when compared to the second disc, like I definitely went through and listened to those songs too. And yeah, Dance One of those mix again wins. This was reissued by Dark Descent in 2010, and I believe these guys put out something this year, I just didn't get it. And I guess I'm gonna have to because I liked pretty much everything on here. Killer Underground Find, I had only heard of this band's name before and decided to pretty much check it out, plus, you know, got it used, so it really wasn't that expensive. And yeah, no, I dig this, and I'm probably gonna have to get that full length that just came out. So yeah, definitely check these guys out. Triumvir Foul, self-titled. This came out in 2015, and I believe this is a recent reissue on Blood Harvest. Either way, this is their debut album. This is dissonant, ugly death metal from Portland. And I'll be honest, this whole album is just a wall of ugly rolling over you, but it's well mixed and really, really good. This has so many layers to the sound. It's just so oppressive and nasty through all this nastiness, and that means like 100% of this album, there's no part of this that is clean or pretty or beautiful. This is all dissonant and just disgusting sounding. There are lots of hooks. There are lots of cool moments in here where they have a very cool distinct riff or a spot of atmosphere that just, I don't know, hits you in the really creepy feels, I guess. It's just nasty sounding. Like this was a disturbing listen. I don't want to say it got to me, but I don't know, I, I felt this album and oof, it's it's a it's a dirty feeling. The guitars are actually kind of like fuzzy in a sense, but not like warm fuzzy, more like fuzz covered in slime and guts and blood and filth. It's that kind of fuzzy. Which doesn't sound fuzzy at all, but it's still fuzzy. Awesome album. I like this a little bit more than the Urine of Abomination EP that I got, which I thought was pretty good. I can see why people really dig this band, and it isn't just because their logo is impossible to read. I really want to see this live. I want to see anything live at this point, but I really want to see this live. Excellent album. Definitely check this out. Varsa, Twin Sons and Wolves Tongues. This came out in 2014 on Blood Harvest Records. And this is an Australian blackened death metal band that definitely favors more death metal. In fact, it's very thrashy death metal. Like, as soon as this starts, it pretty much just rips your face off with, like, just fast, thrashy, aggressive chugging. Doesn't really bother with much atmosphere. This is just all about the brutality and anger. 
the most blackened part of this is probably the vocals. There are a couple of tracks that are a bit more on the black metal side, like End Room. That one is decidedly more black metal than most of this album. Most of this album is just absolute fast, thrashy bangers, and I really dug it. Like, it's just aggressive as hell. Drums in here are really punchy. The snare has a real nasty pop to it. And there are some like cool, like almost melodic death metal riffs in here. So this isn't just like so heavy that it's bereft of hooks. There are plenty of hooks on here. I definitely want to check out more by this band for sure, much like the majority of this stack. But yeah, this was really good. And if you like your black and death metal, very thrashy and aggressive and maybe not as on the black metal side, definitely check this out. It's really good. Fell Grind. Condemnation. This came out this year on Memento Mori Records. I had actually listened to a couple tracks because we subbed their channel a while ago and I saw this in the used bin and I snagged it. And this is really solid death metal. Almost borders on melodic death metal. Not just because there's a lot of melody in here, but like some of the riff styles are very melodic death metal centric, I guess you could say. I love the lead work on here. The lead work is quite exceptional, and these guys definitely have a gift for melody, but it's really cool because they balance that with a lot of brutality. This is almost like skeletal remains, except with like a few mellow death nods in here. I mean, honestly, you could even kind of compare parts of this to Black Dahlia Murder, too, albeit with like, I guess, more raw production. Solid stuff, for the most part. There are some songs in here that are a little bit knee jerk, but I really like the fact that these guys like to like craft a lot of cool melodic hooks and lots of cool like showy guitars but the best part is they didn't get lost in just being melodic and catchy they still knew how to deliver flat out brutal songs you know, blast beats chugs some like kind of breakdowns here and there it's still very very heavy these guys have i believe two other full lengths and i definitely need to check those out as well because this is enough of a sampler for me to suggest that these guys are really good so yeah i'm definitely going to go backwards in this catalog at some point so yeah definitely check this out war grinder ironclad destroyer ep and this came out this year on helter skelter records slash regain records and this is a one-man blackened death metal project from Greece and it's almost kind of done at a grindcore pace. This is insanely fast, just kind of, I don't know, like pretty much like if Exhumed was a black metal band or a black and death metal band, except like we're talking like early Exhumed, like first two albums when they were just flying at all times. This is like Marduk level speed or Vader level speed or put those two bands together that's kind of close to this. Now, as much as I love the intensity, which is on every track, there are like not a lot of like groovy spots on here where you're like, okay, I can slow my head down. It's flying at all times. And that kind of became kind of a problem because it gets to be a little static. It's really kind of hard to like pick out like cool riffs you like after a certain point because it's just constantly going. And I would have liked some more moments to sort of break it up, make it less static, some more dynamics. But overall, I can't argue with the overall energy on this because, whew, man, it's just flying. So yeah, if you want something insanely fast that is only about 18 minutes long, definitely check this out because it's a beast. It's an ironclad destroyer. So yeah, it's helped to destroy your eardrums. Check it out. Loud Blast. Manifesto. This is their new album, came out on Listenable Records, and this is pretty much like the OGs of death metal in France. Like, this was probably one of their first death metal bands, I believe. Their last album that came out in 2014, I really wasn't a huge fan of, so I took a bit of a chance in this, but this is much better. This is a lot better. This is still like very technical, kind of thrashy death metal, but it's very kind of all over the place. There are definitely spots in here that remind me of like Morbid Angel, spots that remind me of like death, and immolation, and all that sort of stuff. But there's even some stuff that is kind of similar to Gojira, which is kind of strange. But I like the mix of melody and atmosphere. The vocals are really good on here. There's even a bonus Motorhead cover of Shine and they did a pretty solid job. Love the overall energy in here. They had Kevin Foley on drums for this because I don't think they have like a permanent drummer at this point or at least there wasn't one listed, but he puts in a solid delivery because this is just frantic and fast for the most part, except for the last track that's on the regular version. This is obviously the Digipack. Infamy B 
to you. Whatever that means, doesn't matter. The song is just epic and doomy as hell. I absolutely love this. I was really surprised because again, that last album was, eh, it was so-so. This is really good. So yeah, definitely check it out if you were kind of wondering what happened to Loud Blast. They're still around and they're still putting out good music. And finally, because this has been a long stack, we have Cadaver, Edder, and Bile. We were thinking about actually reviewing this, but again, the 27th was just loaded with other stuff and we just kind of didn't get to this one. Plus it was kind of hard for me to find a copy. I actually had to order this. This is kind of an on again, off again death metal project from uh, Anders Bowden, I think that's his name. Either way, he resurrected it. He got Dirk Gerburen on drums from formerly of Soil Work and now from Megadeth. And this is just fun, thrashy, nasty death metal. And he even brought on some cool friends like Jeff Barcera and uh, Cam Lee to do uh, guest vocals on here. And this is just quick, short, kind of blackened death metal songs, but they are just flat out nasty, aggressive. The last track on here, Let Me Burn, has such a killer hook in here, but pretty much every single song here I enjoy just because they're just fast, thrashy, like big, chunky riffs. Dirk's doing some really sweet stuff on drums. It's just a fun release, flat out, like, you know, start to finish, and start to finish, it's only about a half an hour long, so it's kind of a short album, but it's pretty much fun throughout, and that was sort of the main appeal when I heard all the tracks. Really solid album, definitely recommend you check out this one, check out their videos too, they're a lot of fun, they're kind of ridiculous. But yeah, this is just flat out killer, and I believe these guys are still on the bill for MDF next year, which whew, I really want that to happen. I really, really could use that show. I really could use any show, but I really, really want to go back because I had such a damn good time in 2019. But yeah, either way, check this out. It's an awesome album, it's loads of fun, and that's exactly what I was looking for out of this one. All right, that is it for this insanely large pile of music I went through. And man, this was fun actually listening to all this cool underground stuff. There was a lot of stuff I had never heard before in terms of like bands too. So yeah, that was a lot of fun. Pretty much rounding out my end of year list or the rest of the guys. And we're definitely working on that suffocation ranking that is gonna be coming up relatively soon. Probably have some more retro reviews too, just because the releases generally start slowing down here. So it'd be fun to actually find something else to talk about, some fun like cool one-off albums again. Either way, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to the channel, subscribe because we do stuff like this all the time. I will catch you later.